What's going on guys, Aldrin Anastasio here with flightpath.com and now that you got your new DJI Mavic Air, I want to go through with you a few steps that I took uh, before taking it out into the field before my first flight. So stay tuned and let's go through the basic setup of the DJI Mavic Air. So before you take this out into the field, I'll just go through with you a few steps that I take to get the DJI Mavic Air ready to go. If you're new to DJI or new to these drones, you might get some information from this. If you've flown some of their previous Phantom or Mavic lineups, this will just be more of a refresh. Feel free to skip this video if you want to. This is more targeted to those that are fairly new to the DJI platform or they might just might have gotten a new DJI Mavic Air. So before we even set up or you get your first flight up, I wanna to talk to you a little bit more about the DJI Refresh Program. So if you're not familiar with it, you almost have to think of the DJI Refresh Program as kinda of like an extended warranty on your drone. And the great thing is, is that it's at a pretty affordable price for your DJI Mavic Air. And what it does is it really covers you if you case you break it, you drop it, you uh, falls into the water or anything like that. Uh, these are very common things that will happen with your drone. If you just pay for that DJI Refresh Program up front, all you have to do is send it back to them. So you, if there's something wrong with it, you send it back to them. They will go ahead and inspect it and more than likely send you back a replacement drone. What you want to do next is really inspect the drone. Everything looks in order. So the first thing you want to do is unfold the legs. You want to unfold the back legs first and then the front. Front legs go out. And then you always want to make sure that you have these legs extended. These legs are very important because the antennas are actually inside of these legs right here. So you always wanna make sure those are extended. I found myself after flying it for a few days, uh, overlooking that and sometimes launching it or starting up the motors and things like this where the legs are down. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that's always opened up because the antennas are in the legs. You'll also wanna do the same thing with the remote, open up the antennas here and just look to see if there's anything out of the ordinary, any cracks, uh, anything that just does not look in place before you start this all up and set it all up. Next, we'll charge up the batteries. You wanna make sure you have fully charged batteries before powering it up, as well as before doing your software updates. To charge them up, all you have to do is remove the battery from the DJI Mavic Air. There's two tabs on each side of the battery. Pull those down and the battery should pop up and out. Then all you do is grab your charger here, and on one end, plug in the charger to the battery cable just like that. And then on the other end, this goes of course to the power. And then you also want to charge your remote. So in your case should have come a DJI USB-C cable, but it also should have come with a USB-C cable uh, to a micro USB adapter. So what you do is just plug that together, plug in your USB into the battery pack right here, and then plug in the micro USB to your remote. So when you first get your remote, you'll see that there is a plug on the side right here, which connects to, more than likely it comes with a uh, iPhone or an iPhone cable a hookup to a micro USB. So what you'll want to do to charge your remote is to unplug this from the side and then plug in the micro USB here and then you'll now be charging up your remote control. Next what we'll want to do is remove the camera and gimbal cover. In order to do that all you do is flip over your drone and there's going to be two little clips right here. Push those together and lift up and what that do is it'll loosen the bottom piece of this protector. So lift this flap up and once it's up, you're gonna push straight out to remove the camera gimbal protector. So pretty straightforward, all you have to do is pinch, lift up and then slide it out. And then there you go, your camera and gimbal are now free to move. The next thing you wanna do is choose a device you want to use when you're flying your DJI Mavic Air. And you'll need a device with you in order for you to see exactly what the camera sees, also, it'll tell you all of your information as far as all your settings go uh, because there is no screen on the Mavic Air remote like there is on the DJI Mavic Pro. So you'll want to make sure you choose your device and once you do choose your device, 
you're gonna go into their app store, whether it's the Apple or the Android app store, and download the latest DJI 4 Go app. Uh, you'll wanna make sure you're on the latest version of the app because that's what supports the DJI Mavic Air. Now that you've downloaded the app, let's install the phone into the device, into the remote control holder right here. Um, when you first get your remote control, more than likely it comes with the cord that's hooked up from a micro USB to an iPhone. Uh, but if you're using an Android device or any other devices, they give you a few other cords here to hook up your micro USB to your device. So I'm using an iPhone 6, and what you have to do is just put in the port right here into the side of the handle into your device, just plug it in there first, and then use the other end, and you're gonna really just kind of sandwich in your phone together. I did like what DJI did for the new Mavic Air remote, and that is they made a step system here. Uh, so it's a little bit wider up front, and then it steps down a little bit more narrow. And what that does is it allows users to have a, maybe a really small or thin case on your phone. Uh, in order for you to use it within the grip. So before on the Mavic Pro and also the Spark ones, the holder was really, really thin and really it can only hold just the phone. Now they kind of open it up a little bit so that if you had a really thin case on it, you're more than likely should be able to still use, uh, use it within the remote controller. So a lot of people will ask, do I need cell service in order to fly my drone? And the answer is yes and no. Uh, when you first set it up, uh, you're gonna need to actually log into your account. So if you already have an existing DJI account, all you have to do is log in for the very first time with your login and password. But if you're a first time flyer and you don't have an account, you will need to then sign up with your mobile device. Uh, so you will need cell service or Wi-Fi service for the just the initial setup. After that, you can fly with a tablet or anything like that uh, with Wi-Fi only. Uh, you don't need cell service. So now that your device is all hooked up, the DJI 4 app is launched, what you're gonna wanna do now is power on your remote. So hit the power button once and press and hold it that second time. It'll then power up, you'll hear that noise. And then at the very bottom of your drone, you have the power button right here. Press once and press again and hold. And then your DJI Mavic Air will power up. The one thing you wanna do is make sure you don't have that gimbal cover and camera cover on here when you're powering up your drone. Uh, because when you do power up the Mavic Air, it will go through a just a power on sequence and the camera will move and adjust. Don't have that protector on there because it'll it restrict the camera from moving around. So the very first time, if you're a new flyer, when you start the app, you're gonna go through a sequence of registration. You're gonna to have to put in your name uh, create a password, create a name for your device, uh, call, name your drone, etc. There are some basic registration information stuff in there that you'll need to set up once you launch the application. After you launch it, uh, we will then look into the firmware to see if you are on the latest firmware. And if you're not, I'll go ahead and show you how to do the firmware update. Now when you launch the app, the one way you can tell if you need a firmware update, whether it's on the remote or the DJI Mavic Air, is to look at the top left. And you see that bar right there, right now, where it says ready to go vision. Uh, if it's ready to go and you're ready to fly, it'll also be green. It'll say ready to go GPS. But if you want to make sure that you're on the latest firmware, what you do is you click that bar. And in aircraft status now, it'll say overall status normal. However, there is a warning on there. So click on that warning. And then you'll see here it says requires uh, update, download update from the DJI Go homepage. So all you have to do now is hit update and go through the process of downloading and updating your DJI uh, Mavic Air. So now that your Mavic Air is all updated, the one thing I wanna talk a little bit about is where your photos are being stored. Now the great thing about the new Mavic Air is this is the first one in the DJI lineup that has actually come out with uh, internal storage. So there's eight gigs of internal storage uh, within the drone itself. Uh, but they allow you to also still utilize an, a micro SD card like they did on the previous versions or previous drones. So let me show you exactly what I do and there's a little bit of a trick that I like to use when I'm installing my micro SD card. So if you go to the very back of your drone and you pull this flap down right here, 
There is a plug for a micro uh, SD card on the right-hand side, and the left-hand side, it is the USB-C plug. Uh, so on the right-hand side, if you wanna add in extra storage, uh, a little bit more than the eight gigs internal, what you wanna do is install a micro SD card in here. And what I've found is uh, the SanDisk Extreme Pros are the ones that I've been using for a while now, and they work the best. You wanna make sure you're using some of the faster cards because of the uh, amount of uh, footage that you're able to shoot on here, as well as the speed you want it to write to your card. So I've been using some of the faster Extreme Pro SanDisk ones, and uh, they've been working out fine. Now after flying it for a while now, there's one thing that's DJ, I kind of just did not, I guess, you know, properly in uh, position it correctly. And that is where the SD card sits and how you're able to push it in and out. Uh, when it's in there, and uh, what you need to do is actually use your fingernail to pop it. And what it'll do is it'll pull it out just a little bit. But trying to actually get that out of there is, is almost impossible. You'll need to bring like uh, another, your key or something just to fit it under there to pull it back out. So what I did on my SD cards is I attached a little small piece of tape to it. So now it acts as a kind of a holder. So when I install it now into my drone, I'm still able to push and click it in just like that. I'm also able to close the door and it has a little tab at the back. But the great thing is now is when I open it up and I click it just like that, I have this flap here to pull it out. So that's a little tip for you guys because honestly it is impossible to pull this thing out from the back of this thing uh, when you're trying to take your card in and out. And if you keep picking at it, you're more than likely just gonna flick it and it'll probably fall on the ground wherever you're at. So the one thing that I ran into a little bit of a, a challenge was looking for where my capture or my footage was being captured to, whether it's being captured to my internal storage or is it captured to my SD card. And let me just show you exactly where to switch that. So all you do is in the application itself, click on the settings uh, sliders down below here. And then on the top right, click on the gear icon. And once you're there, scroll up and then you'll see a line item that says storage location. Click on storage location. Now it'll say, do you want the storage to go to your SD card or do you want it to go to your internal storage? So if you want all your footage to go to your SD card, just go and click on SD card right there, get back, hit menu, and now all of your footage you're shooting will be stored onto the SD card and not the internal memory. So if you wanna see exactly what's on the card or on the internal storage of your DJI Mavic Air, all you have to do is take the USB-C plug that they provided, plug it into the back, of your Mavic Air, plug in that to your computer. And I'm on a Mac and the cool thing about this is that it'll show up on your desktop as two separate hard drives. One will be the internal storage hard drive and the other one will be your SD card. So you have quick access to both of those if you just wanted to pull all that uh, footage or all those photos off of your uh, drives itself without having to uh, pull out the card or anything like that. But uh, I've been using just, you know, like I mentioned, a quick piece of, small piece of tape to quickly pull in and out the card. And as when I wanna download, all I do is plug in USB-C, plug this into my laptop, and then now I'm able to see two hard drives on my desktop of all the information that is stored on the DJ Mavic Air. So that's about it, guys. Just a quick video uh, showing you exactly what I did when I first set it up, some of the things and some of the issues I ran into, and hopefully some of these tips might help you guys out. Uh, such as the, you know, adding a piece of tape tab on the back of your micro SD card to put it in and out. Also where that internal storage was, how do you select that and choose that? that those are some of the things that I was running into when I first started flying. Um, but, you know, these are just initial setup stuff. It'll of course take you a little second to get used to it when you first start flying, but once you have it all done, it's pretty straightforward. Now it should take you, you know, a minute or so to really get up in the air and flying. If you guys got some value from my video, please don't forget to hit that like button and also subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when I post new videos. Um, that's about it. Thanks again for watching. This is Aldrin Astasio with flightpath.com. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.